I have a Discord server, by the way. I post sneak peeks on new videos and whatnot. Feel free to join if you'd like. Thanks. After the fantastic inclusion that was Loki for Legend 60, we got a sneak peek of Legend 61 at BCX 2023. It's probably going to be another Axe Legend, potentially another Boots Legend, since we only have three so far. Or perhaps... Woo! Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! That's what it's all about! Woo! Legend 61 is the long-awaited Spear Cannon Legend 7. Interesting name, but fuck it, we ball. Let's go back a few months into the past. When Legend 60 was being announced, I was pretty devastated that it was another Scythe Legend and not something like Axe or Cannon. Although I love Loki's inclusion still, it had me pretty bummed out. But to see that Cannon inclusion finally return after over three years of no new Cannon Legend, and it's paired with my favorite weapon in Brawlhalla, oh yeah, you know this is about to be a good one. When I main Lin Fei and Queen Eye and Xbox, this was my dream combination. Legitimately. There's so much insane stuff to talk about with Seven, so let's hop right into the signatures. Seven is actually one of the first legends to have more than six signatures. And no, I'm not just talking about a variation of a sig. Seven has a whopping total of nine signatures. Three cannon signatures and six spear signatures. I'll be classifying the spear signatures in this way. If it's the electricity version, it'll have an E after it. Fire will have an F after it. Capiche? Sweet. Let's get on with it. Spear Insig E is a pretty good one. It goes true with Spear Downlight, which can be pretty wild sometimes. The signature doesn't have that much force at all, but it comes out pretty quickly. I think compared to 7's other variation, this version is much worse. Spear Insig F is so wildly good. One of 7's strongest signatures on Spear by far. Hold it in place as you watch your enemies get cooked to death. It kills pretty early and can be slide charged as well, making it a larger force to be reckoned with. A problem that I have with it actually is sometimes when slide charging it, you'll be stuck in place for so long and it actually caused me to self-destruct a few times. A skill issue on my part probably. Spear Side Sig E I think is just alright. Not weak, of course, I think it's better than Spear Insig actually, for a few reasons. As a standalone signature, it's overall better, but it also has quite a lot of true combos. Side Sig Neutral Light, Side Sig Side Light, Side Sig Down Light, Side Sig Sayer, Side Sig Dare. How much text does this legend have again? Seven should have maybe one of these true combos, or even none. For a three decks legend, this is absurd. But who needs true combos when you have Spear Side Sig F? If there is any signature being nerfed, BMG, please have it be this one. The force is wildly overtuned on this one, killing enemies so much more earlier than deserved. This is from personal experience too, by the way. The amount of times I win a match from abusing this move is insane. Onto Seven's overall weakest spear signatures, we have the down sigs. Down sig E is the one you use to switch back to electricity, and I think this one is much worse. While it might be quicker, the hitbox is not all that great and the force doesn't end up being great either. Not only that, but a weapon throw will let you just switch back to electrical anyways, so it's kind of useless to go for. Downsig F on the other hand has some interesting quirks to it. Of course you have to use this to swap to the fire signatures, there's no other way to, being much better than the electrical signatures as well. But it also hits behind you for some reason? The same thing happened with Loki and I really don't know how to feel about it. I think the signature would be much worse if it didn't hit behind you, but with how slow it can be I guess I can see its inclusion? I don't see them nerfing this one unless it's the hitbox behind, because getting a hit in the front feels pretty rewarding. I also just want to point out that Downsig E actually does hit behind itself and actually has some true combos, but I feel like it's too niche to be considered better than Downsig F, so I feel like Downsig F is personally better. <sighs> okay, even though we just spent so much time on six signatures, we have three more to go through on Cannon. Let's go over them. Cannon Insig is pretty strange, hitting quite a far area away from your character. It doesn't combo with anything as far as I know, unless it's really niche like a weapon throw combo. Even slide charging the signature doesn't work too well for me, and it has some blind spots in the middle too. Not that much force either. This one I think is fine the way it is, because when it works, it works. Otherwise, it's easy to counter if your enemy is in the right spot. Cannon Side Sig I thought was just about as mid as Insig, but I'd say it's a bit better. It does a decent job at edge guarding, allowing you not to be punished as easily. It also doesn't have a big problem with blind spots. Not only that, but it does have some pretty interesting platform tech that I always love to see on any legend. I use this on a whole lot of different signatures in the game, this one included. It has some nice force too, especially for a signature that isn't too hard to hit, but not too easy either. Although it's wall version, and... Okay, so I legit have never hit this on 7. I have her level 18 at the time of writing this, and it's just so criminally bad. Onto the final signature, we have Cannon Down Sig. This is 7's most broken signature by far, on Cannon and maybe even Spear. Maybe Spear Side Sig F is better, but this signature has a great amount of force, can be slide charged in chaotic ways, and has two versions. A funny story that I have about this one is that while 7 was in alpha testing at BCX, me and my buddy Josiah 
Notice the bottom part of his spiked. So, we went and grabbed TWK to show him since he was chilling around the area while 7 was playable, and he mentioned it was intentional. Not that I'm complaining, actually. In fact, it was funny to hear that coming from one of the people who helped design the signatures. And I was genuinely surprised to see it stay all the way to 7's release. I also haven't hit this one too much myself, but I can imagine it's really good. Just like most of 7's signatures. Looking at my script, I can tell this will be my longest analysis already. Overall though, 7's spear game is much better, for the 6 signatures alone. But if we're talking about fire and electricity variation, I think the fire variation signatures completely dominate the competition. Let's talk a little bit about some other 7 topics, like her skins. I actually don't like these too much, but they have some neat upsides to them, which we'll go through right now. God tier has Firefighter and Default 7. Firefighter was originally in pretty good tier, but it's grown on me. It has sick color swaps and an awesome cannon. As for default, I love when legends have great default designs, this one included. The wrench spear is so legendary too. Pretty good tier has just tiny figure 7. It has this nice Lego style to it, with good color swaps too. A cute skin, but not my pick. Lastly, we have mid tier with Wanderer 7. This is actually my pick before she released, but the color swaps just disappointed me personally. The weapons aren't very memorable either, but it does remind me of my favorite sidekick, so that's an upside. Some nice launch skins, but not as impressive as Thea or Loki in my opinion. Tier list wise, out of S, A, B, C, and D, 7 is S tier. I didn't even have to say that part, we all just knew. A canon legend being S tier. I must be dreaming. But then again, Onyx was S tier for a while and might still be thanks to pro play 2v2s. But that's a topic for another day. I just love seeing canon representation like this. 7 has 9 freaking signatures, so balancing all of them will be quite hard to do. But right now, over half of them are pretty insane to deal with. Of course, her signatures aren't the only strong part about 7. She has Spear, one of the best weapons in the game currently, next to Axe, and in my opinion, Blasters. Cannon is quite stronger to the right hands too, and when put with 7's stat lineup, she's an absolute menace to deal with. 7 attack, 3 dex, 8 defense, and 4 speed. You know when I saw this at BCX, I immediately knew it was Queen Eye's stats with dex and speed swap. BMG did it. They made another legend with some of the most insane stats Brawlhalla has to offer. It's interesting how it's so similar to Queen Eye's stats, except while 7 is considered to have the best stats in the game, Queen Eye is considered to have the worst. All because of speed. We're getting a bit off topic here though. Best stance for 7 would definitely be speed stance. It takes out a dex and you don't need dex on spear or cannon. Although I've been using defense stance for a whopping 9 defense and it's been working quite well, so maybe you could run that too. Attack takes down on speed, leaving you at 3, which is no good. And do you really want to put into deck stance? Overall, I like 7 quite a lot. Even from a lore POV, it's interesting that she finally expands on that part of Baraza's lore that we never got to see until now. A lot of people will also probably think she's a guy. Happened too many times already with the past. Of course, 7 is ultra broken right now, and she'll probably be nerfed after the holidays are over. But I think even after she does get nerfed, I'll probably still play her. I love playing cannon, and of course spear is my main weapon. The stat lineup is very preferable for most players too. The only reason I can think that you wouldn't enjoy playing 7 is if you straight up don't like cannon, or if you're a one trick. Talking to you scythe mains. If you enjoyed this analysis, feel free to subscribe, it's free and you can always unsubscribe at any time. Join the discord server as well, and be there or be square. And until next time, always remember to keep on brawling.